team that everyone has to catch. And, and just one wonders whether, you know, has everyone got enough? What will they do if they say they're in the Europa League? I mean, they, they play their second team. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm just hearing that we're hearing some, oh my goodness, I'm hearing some very, very serious and sad news. Now we have some very, very sad news. Boy has now passed away. Tributes are being paid to him on Twitter. The news has broken in the past couple of moments. There's a very short statement on the FA website saying they extend their condolences and sympathies to his, fa to his family. There are no words to describe how heartbroken we are. It's an absolute tragedy for everyone in football. So, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a tough couple of months. I was, <clears throat> I was not taking the loss of that boy well, but I know I've got to be strong. There's still more work left to do and his story is not over yet. Ladies and gentlemen, that boy had a son and let it be known that his name is that boy junior. He's just like his dad in every single way. He's one rated in every single attribute except for composure. So he's done well there. Ball control, crossing, curve. It doesn't matter what the stats are, whether they be defending, goalkeeping, attacking, all of it is one rated. And just look at him. He is the spitting image of his father as well. Except for the fact that he's seven feet tall. Now, despite that boy Junior being two whole feet taller than his father, he still weighs 178 pounds and he still has a lean body type. So instead of his dad, dad boy, who was five feet tall and 178 pounds and horrifically overweight, we've now got a guy that's borderline malnourished with that height and that weight. I tell you what, it's a reoccurring theme with the boy family. The body mass indexes are all over the place. But let's get back on track. As I'm sure you all know, that boy did indeed pass away. It was an absolute tragedy. It shocked the football world to its core, but he did leave us behind a son. A prodigy to keep the boy name alive, to keep his legacy going. And just as we did with his father, I will do the same with his son. That boy Jr. is a one overall, just like his father was when he first began his journey. I will be guiding Dat Boy Jr. to a 99 overall. We will be giving him five drills every single week, just like we did with his father, until he reaches that 99 overall. And these are the first five drills that we will give him throughout the entire season. We have dribble possession. It works on his dribbling, his ball control, stamina, and agility. Next up is attacking scenarios, which works on his attacking positioning, his finishing, and his shot power. Next up is the advanced free kicks, curve, long shots, and free kick accuracy. The penultimate training drill is through the gates, which works on his vision and his short passing. And then, of course, advanced crossing, which works on his long passing and his crossing. I'm also going to monitor his progress and compare it to that of his father to see who reaches the 99 rating first. It all starts with a single step and that step begins right here with his first five drills. How's he going to go? He gets, okay. So he gets three C's and that's about it though. But look at his overall saw. He's gone all the way up already to a three overall. Just like that, he has tripled his footballing ability. To be honest though, I think his father went up to four overall after his first set of drills, so I don't know. But I won't be discouraged by it, I will not complain, we're just going to keep doing this for the rest of the season. I should also probably introduce you and mention the team that we are doing with Dat Boy Jr. And it is, of course, Forest Green Rovers. Way back in the day when I was training Dat Boy Jr.'s father from a 1 overall to a 99 overall, I found him in Portsmouth. I took over that club, I became the manager of Portsmouth, and just like we're hoping to do with Forest Green Rovers, we took them from League 2 all the way up to the Premiership with the leadership of both yours truly and Dat Boy. We now hope to do the same with Boy Jr. Can he live up to his father? Here come the second set of training drills for Dat Boy Jr. His first set, we're nothing too amazing. His second set, still not great. But we are seeing improvements and higher overalls. As a matter of fact, I think he's gone up all the way to a five overall. Mate, he's killing it. Just give him the Ballon d'Or now. We are only three days into this career mode and he's already had a five overall. Are you kidding me? And while, yes, I am focusing on Dat Boy Jr., that doesn't mean I want to neglect my duties as manager of Forest Green Rovers. I still want to take Forest Green Rovers all the way up into the Premier League, so I need to continuously be improving and adding depth to the squad. So I'll hopefully continue to add to the depth to give Dat Boy Jr. all the support that he needs as his third set of drills goes through... Oh, we're getting a lot of D's and a lot of C's, aren't we, Dad Boy Jr.? And even though, yes, I do want to improve the team, for this first season, I'm, I'm okay with leaving the team relatively unchanged, but I did come across one free agent, and I could not believe that he was available. <laughs> Fang 
was available as a free agent. And if you don't know about Queenie Fang, then what are you doing? As if you were unaware of the Queenie Fang. The man that was scouted by Bayern Munich and signed pretty much only for his awesome name and great haircut. The younger, lower-rated Chinese centre-back that scored for Bayern Munich, thank you very much. I was just doing my usual scouting of the free agents to see if there were any decent gets for us and... I could not believe that Bayern Munich let this man go. So yeah, we are going to be bringing Kui Li Fang to Forest Green Rovers and he is going to be amazing. Instead of a grand, how about we pay you what you're worth? How about 50 grand? How about 50... Okay, I need to calm down. All right, let's take a step back. I need to remember, I am not with a team that has an awful lot of budget here. Looks like everyone's happy. And ladies and gentlemen, the first signing of my reign as manager at Forest Green Rovers is the one and only Kui Li Fang. What a steal. Back to that boy Junior, back to his drills, hoping to go again, maybe even further, and we do. From a seven overall, what does he go up to? Is it eight or is it nine? Can he go up again? He does go up again, all the way up into the nines. I don't think he'll go further than that, though. He's got a long way to go before he is no longer the worst footballer, not just on the planet, but at least at Forest Green Rovers. The lowest rated player at Rovers is 50 rated, and his name is Anderson. You better fucking listen here, Anderson. I know I'm supposed to be your manager. I know I'm supposed to have your best interest at heart, but... We're fucking coming for you, motherfucker. For the fifth set of drills now, and he's up into the double digits. That boy, Junior, come on. We are on our way. He's up to a 10. He may even go up to an 11, and he bloody does. He's definitely looking a lot better than when he just had ones across the board. He's got some 14s going. He's got some 16s going, mate. The guy's going to be a 99 before we know it. We've also now completed our first full month worth of training drills, so I'm kind of interested to see where Dap Boy was at the end of July. Dap Boy went from 1 overall to 15 overall after the first month's worth of drills. Dap Boy Jr., has only gone up to 13. Maybe a little bit concerning. It's still phenomenal growth. We cannot dispute that, but it is less than his father. But we have indeed made it to the first game of competitive football, the first game of League Two. Of course, we are going to hopefully try to get promoted in the first season. That is sort of what I'm expecting, especially maybe with this Dat Boy Jr. lad in the team. Does Dat Boy Jr. score in his competitive debut for Forest Green Rovers? He does not, but we get a 2-2 draw. Okay, so from this point on, I'm going to continue to, as I'm doing right now, give him drills and train up his overall. As I do that, I'm going to advance month by month by month. Wow, that's actually a really good set of drills. Holy shit. I will continue to give him drills every single week as per usual. And at the end of every month, we will check to see what his overall is. Now we have entered into deadline day. I might look into making some transfers potentially, although I was pretty convinced I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to, but... We might need to look into some signings. That boy Junior is a 22 overall after two months worth of training. Now that is bloody impressive considering that he was one overall at the beginning of the season and he's increased by plus 21. However, his dad still got him beat. He was 25 overall by this point of his career as well. So that boy, mate, you're behind the pace. You've got to pick it up some. Our goal scoring is coming from a very Bizarre source, a center defensive midfielder in Drissa Traore. I've honestly never heard of you before in my lifetime, but mate, you keep going the way you're going, you'll be a star. We'll just keep on keeping on, keep on with the drills, and hopefully keep on with the positive results. So we've now reached October. I've still got this set of drills to give that boy. As you can see, he's currently playing with, or should I say, in the 30s. It doesn't look like he's even going to go up in any overall whatsoever. He goes, he doesn't even, I think, go up in a stat, maybe except for one or two. I, that's shocking. That's, oh, mate, I'll, I'll tell you what. I've not been super impressed with Dat Boy Jr. Look, let's be honest. I may be being extremely harsh on him here. He's gone 30 up in his overall, and we're not even halfway through the season. But my problem with him is that he just does not score goals. Look at him. He's played 12 games now, and not a single goal. Not even an assist. Are you kidding me? Oh, thankfully, we're still going okay. It's not great. We're not up into the top six or seven as of yet, but we are only about three or so points away. So with plenty of football matches left to go for the season, I, I'm, not, I'm not worrying too much. I think we had a slow start, but we'll bounce back. As soon as a miracle happens and Dat Boy actually hits the back of the net and maybe gets going, then surely there'll be nothing stopping us. And look, you already know what I'm going to say. I, I sound like a broken record, but Dat Boy Jr. does not score goals. There is a serious problem with a striker that can't score goals. 15 games played, zero goals, zero assists. He's got two clean sheets to his name, so fair play to him for that, but bloody hell, son. I think his dad was pretty well in the 40s by this point of his career, so 
It's a bit concerning. I think we can pretty much all but rule out the fact that Dat Boy Jr. will hit a 99 overall before his dad did. Right now, I'm not even thinking about the 99 overall. I'm just wondering when the hell Dat Boy Jr. is going to get his first bloody goal. And now we are in December, the last month of 2017. One more month left until the new year. And do I really need to say it? This fucking guy has still not scored a goal. It's December for Forest Green Rovers after 19 appearances, man. Not even an assist. Not even an assist. You can't even get an assist. We are currently flirting with the top seven right now. And let me tell you, the top seven's a bit of a bitch. The top seven is definitely playing hard to get right now, but it's okay. Even though we are in eighth position, we are tied on points with Grimsby Town. So a berth in the top seven, a spot in the top seven at the end of the season. If we keep going the way we're going, could happen, could not happen, but I tell you what, if we don't get promoted in this first season, it will be disappointing. And lads, as far as the progression of Dat Boy Jr. goes, he's he's going okay. He's gone from a 1 to a 43 overall. You're 43 rated, you're still the worst player possibly in the game. I'm not going to go that far. Maybe there might be someone lower rated than him, which in an achievement, I'm sure that will be, he'll take that, considering he was 1 at the start. But he is still the worst player at Forest Green Rovers. Anderson is still the second worst player. To be fair, he's gone from a 50 to a 52. So he's staving off that moment as long as possible. And on top of all that, Forest Green Rovers have moved finally up into the top seven. We currently sit in sixth with 39 points, although it is still quite close between all the clubs that are vying for a spot in the top seven, and there is still an entire half of the season to go, I'm definitely going to take it. I've got a massive short list of plays. I don't have a very high budget. I've only got like a hundred grand worth of wage. And really, I'm only going to try to sign players on pre-contracts just because we don't have any cash to make any one proper signing. We have to go for whoever's available in the last year of their contract. And take a look at this. Your boys pretty much signed every single player that I wanted to in this transfer window. Hell, I even threw in some extra plays in there as well because I had a bit more cash like this Yadam bloke, this Mika guy from Sunderland. So hopefully we'll be rolling in talent in League One as well. So let's keep it going then. The drills continue. I'll be very interested to see what Dat Boy Jr. at least ends the first season on. I'm sure he'll cross over into the 50s, but... Will he be anywhere close to where his father was? So we have now completed the entire month of January. That is the final transfer window done. I've continued to train Dat Boy Jr. He's up to a pretty good level, and we are going to check pretty much the halfway point of the season, how his progress is doing. He stands above the rest of the team when it comes to the overall changes. Have a look at this. You've got Queenly Fang going up by five because, of course, he would start to grow. You know that that overall is a joke, and he's going to be up right up there very soon. But he's gone up the second most in the team with Dat Boy Jr., a plus 45. How crazy does that look? Even though his physical attributes are really struggling, you do have things like his mental attributes, things like his attack and positioning and his vision getting better. Really, the only physical attribute that we're seeing go up is his agility and his stamina to an extent as well. But that's only because that's what we're training. Pace, balance, jumping, strength, mate, forget about it. It's not going up at all. He's a seven foot man with eight strength. What the fuck? His value now sits at an absolutely staggering 30,000 pounds, which may not seem that impressive, but his actual value has increased by over 2,000%. That boy Jr. is like the living embodiment of Bitcoin. However, though, despite his absolutely unbelievable progress, it still hasn't helped him score a single goal or a single assist for the entire season. I will be advancing all the way to May, where hopefully we have a playoff final awaiting us. If not that, maybe just straight promotion. Who knows? That'd be terrific. Although I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. A lot of questions are about to be answered in the next couple of months. Will Forest Green Rovers make it to League One? Will Dat Boy Jr. finish with a 50, 55, 60 plus overall? Will he finally score a fucking goal? Ladies and gentlemen, the second half of Dat Boy's first ever season is underway.
goal. It's a terrific goal at a terrific time, and it should seal the win. And so here we are. We've nearly reached the conclusion of the first season with Dat Boy Jr. And look, I think it's no surprise that at the beginning of this season, I was not in a good place. I was hit very hard by the death of Dat Boy. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't grooming myself. Wasn't looking after myself at all. But after beginning a brand new journey with Dat Boy Jr., I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot happier, a lot healthier. I've gotten a trim, as you can see, so that way I, you know, don't look as homeless as I used to. After nearly an entire season of training, there's still a couple more weeks left to go, but Dat Boy Jr has gone from a 1 overall to a 55 overall before the final game of the season. And for those of you that are wondering what that final game is, it's only the playoff bloody final. We made it all the way to the big dance. We only just made it into playoff contention, only finishing 7th on the final day of the season, beating out Cambridge United and Morecambe. We got it done in the semi-finals against Colchester, and now we go to play Wickham in the final at Wembley Stadium. The team is near fully fit and ready to go. We are missing a couple of players, and by a couple I really mean one big name that's unfortunately not going to be playing in the final. Of course, Queeley Fang had to get injured before the biggest game of our season. To be fair, he has been injured for a while. He's been ruled out for like four months. We'll hopefully get it done without him. I know it's going to be tough, but with Dat Boy Jr. finally banging in the goals, as of course, we saw him get his first goal and his first assist of the season in the same game. And you know what? Who cares if the only way Dat Boy Jr. can score is for him to beat the keeper and tap it into an empty net from six yards out. I've been saying this whole time when he scores his first goal, the floodgates will open, and hopefully they will open at Wembley Stadium. It's the final game of the season, a spot in League One on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, Dat Boy Jr., let's do this. Well, the wait is almost over. We are down to the last game of this terrific competition. Two extremely good teams will go head to head with the trophy itself. Moments away from the kickoff, and we're live. Here we go, everybody. A spot in League One beckons, it's underway. Working it out wider here. Marsh Brown, maybe now a chance. The cross is in. It could be! Oh my god, no! Oh, he was too far out to attempt it, wasn't he? He's got to have an open net from six yards. Look at this header. What? Mm. How? We got a free kick from a very promising area. If we deliver something beautiful, not at all where I was aiming that. What the hell? Reese Brown, we cross it in again. Back post this time, couldn't get there again. We're getting service. Oh dear, what is that goalkeeper wearing? That kit is an abomination. I'm not surprised that boy Jr. missed that sitter only a few minutes ago. Bloody hell, he got put off by the goddamn shirt. Oh my god, no. What's happened? Oh, nearly a huge mistake. Jesus, I don't know if that's who I was passing to, but bloody hell. The Wickham player tried the spectacular, and it may have potentially messed up their spot in the League One. Great movement. Great movement. Play through, sleep through here. Oh my... Genuinely starting to get a bit pissed off. Not even kidding. Look, I was pretty depressed when we lost that boy. I think that's obvious. But if that boy Junior keeps going the way he's going, I'm going to get thrown into a brand new batch of depression. Half time, nil nil, and a bucket load of chances for that boy Junior. And listen, guys, I'm not joking, okay? If this continues, if that boy Junior misses another absolute sitter, I am dragging his ass. I don't care who your dad is. If you miss one more chance, I am taking you off. Back post, no. Brett. Oh, what is what is that? This could be the moment. This could be the moment. Oh my god, he's hit the post. Oh, Jesus Christ. I take the shot. He's hit the post. I swear to God, this guy will not score today. Is this the moment? Is this the moment? That boy, Junior. Nah, it's done. I'm done. I'm finished. No, it's done. No, it's done. We're finished. See you, that boy. You're getting dragged. That is unbelievable. He'll see that in his nightmares for years to come. A real mess up. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. I'm not laughing at him. Definitely not. Oh, he's been so disappointing. That boy, Junior, you are an imposter. You're a fraud. You are no son of that boy. I don't believe it! It's Superboy! No, wait, hang on a minute, that, that's... That's Superboy Junior! It's incredible! 
He is the son of that boy! This game has been a disaster so far, but surely now. Marsh Brown, little cross. Superboy! Oh, the that is surely the 90th minute winner to get us into League One, you bloody beauty! One chance, all it took, it's in the back of the net, and Forest Green Rovers are into League One. That boy Junior returns, Superboy Junior leaves us, he's done his job, let's just celebrate. You beauty! For the entire first season, this bloke only scored two goals and I think registered like one assist. That was it. However, it was good in other ways. For example, we trained him up from a one overall to a 56 overall in just the first season. For any of you that are wondering how that compares to his father, the like great Dat Boy, unfortunately, he fell a little bit short, but not by too much. Dat Boy went up by 57 in his first overall. Dat Boy Jr., only 56. He was a little off the pace and he was a bit slow to get going, but he did eventually get better. Then we had an absolutely incredible end to our season when we qualified for the playoff final. That boy Junior to begin the game was slow, had a million chances and just missed them all. It was absolutely infuriating, but we were saved when he transformed into Superboy Junior. I was starting to doubt that this man was even the descendant of the great Dat Boy, but that just sealed it. I was a little concerned watching that final too, because part of me thought that maybe this kid was an imposter, that he wasn't actually a descendant of the great Dat Boy. But right when I thought I lost all faith, he transformed into Superboy Junior, leaving no doubt in my mind that this is the son of that boy. He scored a cracking goal, 90th minute, won the game with virtually the final kick, and we are in League One. Hopefully now, he will actually kick on and score, oh, I don't know, more than two goals in one season. We also did some other pretty cool stuff in the first season. For example, we signed the unfortunate Bayern reject, but still Chinese superstar, Kui Li Fang. He's only 53, 54 rated. He did grow a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean like seven or eight overall in that first season. So hopefully his overall kicks on along with that boy, Junior. And then there was um, some slight feedback. Apparently there was one player that you blokes wanted me to sign and uh, I mean, yeah, if you if you want me to. Marvelous Nakamba, it wouldn't be a Dat Boy series without him. So hopefully we will at some point bring him back because yeah, I don't think I can do it right now. It's not like I can just buy Marvelous Nick Campbell whenever I want to. I'm Forest Green Rovers and this man is a legend. He's, um, he's a little above Forest Green Rover's pay grade at the moment, but hopefully we will one day be on his level. Let's be real, okay? We don't deserve Marvelous Nakamba, but we will. This marvelous man will be wearing the green of Forest Green Rovers very soon, but for now, you just have to wait for us, Nakamba. You know what? Scratch that. We'll wait for you. In the meantime, if anyone else cool comes along, then yeah, maybe for sure I'll, I'll sign them up, but I, I really don't know. I don't know who I potentially will come across in this career mode that makes me go, hey, I might want to sign this bloke. Just speaking of new signings too, by the way, we did bring in a couple of pre-contract signings just to help us compete in League One. Guys like McLean, Crawford, Leonard's a big signing I'm happy with, Yadam, who's a left back, but can play at right back. A pretty much entirely new back for Mika, a goalkeeper who's a little higher rated. We've got Mendez, uh, Lang, is that how we pronounce it? Basically what I'm saying is we've got a pretty good team now for League One. We should be able to compete and hopefully not go straight back down, which would suck, and hopefully maybe even just potentially go back to back with promotion. But anyway, the second season officially gets underway right now with these five drills. The first set of drills we'll be giving Dat Boy Jr. in this season. Let's hope for some good-ish results in the very first one. We've got weeks and months, really an entire season of this. We get an A for the advanced free kicks, Average results everywhere else, really. But it is the beginning of a long, long season, so there's many more drills to come. We are approaching the first game of League One as, again, we get back into drills, and hopefully now we might see him get up to a 57 if he wants to give me one good shift in the training room. Finally, there we go, 57. He's gone up with his first overall, and it took a little over a month to get him up by one overall. Is that concerning? I think it is just a little bit, considering that... We are chasing uh, Dat Boy at the end of his second season. He got 73 with his overall. We'll see if Dat Boy's, uh, you know, natural growth kicks in at any point. If he just starts soaring with his overall without training. But if it doesn't, 
I don't see us getting to a 73, that's for sure. And to give you a little bit of an idea as to why Marvelous Nick Camp is a bit out of our league at this point, it's because he's 76 overall and worth 7.5 million pounds. Like, we just don't have the cash. We couldn't pay him the wage that he wanted, or deserved, should we say. And there's no way that we'd ever pay the transfer budget needed for him. So... Again, Marvelous in the camp is just a bit of a pipe dream at this point. Do not worry though, because I will be making signings at some point as we continue to, wow, give him drills. Uh, let's take a moment here. We've been training him up and it took him ages to get to a 57. Now out of nowhere, he's gone up by plus three in his overall. And then of course, an extra plus one through training to get to plus four now. I hope you're ready boys, because this is the season that Dat Boy Jr. sets the world on fire. Anyway, we are finally underway with this League One season. I'm now going to just be training week in, week out. I'll show you some drills. I won't show you all, but basically we are going to start cracking on now. I'm not going to make any signings in this window. I'll probably make some signings in January and we might stop and play a couple of actual games. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm kind of thinking up an idea for Dat Boy Jr. Seven foot Dat Boy Jr. We are off to a basically perfect start in the league, winning every single one of our games so far. So that's amazing. We did unfortunately get knocked down in the Carabao Cup by Bournemouth. But hey, at least we're in the checkered trade trophy. Now taking a look at Dat Boy's stats after we reach October. And he's now up to a plus eight. Again, training him every single, every single time. And it's just, like, this is all natural growth. Barely any of this is forced through training. Yes, I mean, his stats are still going up in part, like his long shot's up to a 96 now. That's his highest rated stat. We could very well see the first 99 rated stat, maybe by the next win, maybe even by next month. And look, lads, there was something I wanted to attempt at some point this season, considering that we're doing so well in the league. And I'll show you the league table eventually, I'll, uh, but just know we're doing bloody well. I wanted to trial what it was like to put a seven foot tall player, even if they weren't a goalkeeper, in between the sticks. I did this with that boy when he was five feet tall and he was an absolute superstar, obviously, incredible, best goalkeeper of all time. But how is that boy Junior, a seven foot tall outfielder, going to go as a goalfielder? And take a look at the fixture we've got coming up. It's Portsmouth, the team that that boy used to play for. Here's the league table really quickly too, by the way. We are sort of in contention for maybe automatic promotion. Who knows, we could finish top of the league one. That'd be sensational, but we're definitely going okay at the moment. We find ourselves pretty comfortably in fourth. But we are doing it for this one game and one game only. Portsmouth FC is going to have to deal with a seven foot tall striker in goal. How is it going to go? Time will tell. That boy was a man of many talents, ladies and gentlemen. Is his son, that boy Jr., going to be just as good in between the sticks? He's only got an extra two feet to work with, for crying out loud. Oh my God, would you look at this? Would you look at this? He looks like he's in his element. He looks like a beast. Okay, we'll see if we can get the win in this game. But on top of that, I'm interested to see if that boy Jr. is going to end up being tested. Who knows? Maybe even if we've got a bit of a lead for ourselves, I might... Uh, might let a couple chances go through and just see what happens. Oh, slipped in nicely here. Mendes Lang. Low cross. Not to the player I needed to, but McLean will still get it through. And clean on through makes it 1-0. Look at this. We take Lewis Malt off immediately. And this bloke gets one chance and buries it near post. Why did I even bring this Malt bloke on? All he's done is rob games of that boy, Jr. Oh, Oh, you're taking the piss now. It's 2 0. We're just moving it and passing it around like we're Man City or something. Look at this little toe poke. The defender comes crawling out and just finishes in the bottom corner. Has he got the pace to burn? He does. Oh, it's a little stumble. Not a penalty. It will be a free kick. And look who's immediately. I'll be honest. I was thinking about getting him to take it anyway. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, all right then. Okay. Will we be able to pull it off though? I'm not sure. I don't know. This, I don't think so. Nah, I didn't think so, but the keeper, he's still up for it. That boy Jr. Sharp turn this. Finesse! Oh, look at this. He's an absolute giant. He has skied that. Oh, that boy Jr. There you go. Punch is clear. Very good work. Great ball in there. Oh, that's three. Okay, you know what? We're leading 3 0. I'm feeling pretty comfortable now. I might start testing that boy Jr. just a little bit. And, oh no, boys, no, I didn't want to do the offside trap. Boys, no, that boy Jr. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, he hasn't won me over immediately. That's uh, not the best of starts. Yeah, Crawford looking for an option. Oh no, he's turned it over horribly. Through goes Pittman. That boy Jr. Oh yes, he's distracted him and he's made a miss. Good job. 
Oh, I'll tell you what, this is a genuine good attack themselves. Chaplin the save. Oh, he couldn't contain. Like, just, just hold it, mate. Oh my god, look at this. How does he not hold that? And without fail, straight to fucking Naismith. I'm pretty confident any time he's had to make a save. That boy, you're not really filling me with an awful lot of confidence. I'm almost starting to think maybe I shouldn't be playing a striker at goalkeeper. God, they're in here. Ah, oh, three. Can you just... Any shot on target, mate. I know... I, it doesn't even feel like he's made a save. He's made one or two. Yeah, sure. A punch cleared from a corner and maybe that one little parry that he literally gave straight to fucking Naismith for their second. But could he deal with any shot? Like, just at least one. Like, the bloke doesn't even try to make the save until it's already past his fucking shoulder and in the net. All right, great. Well, um, this is not going the way I was hoping it would. <gasps> Horrible turnover. Oh my goodness, we could do this. Back post, back post, back post. Control! Oh my fucking god, how'd that not end the net? Oh my, did that make sense? English. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Stay in front. Blocked. And that's gonna, what the fuck was that? He's just, he, Chaplin completely lost it, ran over the line for a, well, it's not even gonna be a goal kick. It's the end of the game, 3-3, and um, okay, that experiment didn't go too well. My curiosity got the better of me, and now we are leaving with only a point. I probably also could have won the game if I didn't, uh, let them stroll right through my defense to test that boy junior. Okay, so lesson learned. I won't do that again. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's just continue on with training and some good results here. I'm going to continue to advance through pretty much every single month now without really stopping. Okay, lads, so we're in November and we are finally seeing that boy increase by plus 10. Double digits now overall change for the season only in November. 66 overall. It's kind of crazy to think that we started this at 56 and... We're chasing that boy's 73 at the end of the second season. We may potentially see him, if he doesn't really substantially slow down toward the end of the second season, not just surpass that boy, but go miles ahead of him. He's slowly starting to make some more appearances now too, which is which is a good sign. So yeah, we will hopefully he will kick off. Now into December, that boy only goes up by one in his overall, so maybe we are starting to see him slow down just a little bit. If it's only 67 and only a couple more months left until the end of the season, then maybe 73, mid-70s is probably where he's going to finish at. And finally, we make it to the halfway stage of this season. We've made January 2019. It's here. Plus 13 overall change. Quigley Fang 2, by the way, is uh, doing a respectable job of a uh, plus 4, but um, it's hard for me to give him games at this point. Something else probably worth noting is the fact that Datboy Jr. now finally, after training him up for so long, has a couple of 99 rated stats. Long shots, shot power, short passing, and finishing. So he's deadly from outside the box. And on top of that, his dribbling is getting pretty good as well. I'm very happy with the way he's tracking on at the moment. He will surely beat Dat Boy's 73 at the end of this season. It's been great except for the whole putting him in goal and he conceded three. That Against Portsmouth, that wasn't great. I would be mad if it was any other club but Portsmouth that fucking just absolutely ruined Dat Boy Jr. But hey, whatever. It's it's Dat Boy's old club hazing his son. That's that's cool. I don't really mind Portsmouth these days, you know. We, we've had some pretty good times in career mode. The fact that they were Dat Boy's first ever club. The fact that I did a road to glory with them and had a great career mode with them as well. Armstrong, Dembele, Van Ginkel, Sergio Roberto... And Kenny Prince Schwab. It also looks like we finally heard back from our scouted future star, Kenny Prince Schwab. That is gonna be our man, Kenny Prince Schwab. What a hero. Can he finish? Kenny Prince Schwab scores on his debut. Beautiful debut. It's an assist and a goal for KPS. Kenny Prince Schwab, ladies and gentlemen. Remember the bloody name. The J Bucks medal. The player of the season. This could be it. It could be two. Kenny Prince Schwab. He'll get in on the action as well. And we are going to be crowned Premier League champions at Old Trafford. Portsmouth are the back-to-back -back Premier League champions. This is the Champions League final. Here we go. Lorenzi. Good ball back into there. Van Ginkel with a strike. Van Ginkel scores a brilliant goal to win maybe the Champions League final. And now it's going to be that man, Kenny Prince Schwab, to lift the Champions League trophy. I wonder what Kenny Prince Schwab is up to these days. 
Wow, is he still? Yeah, he's still he's still kicking about these days. All right, good on him. That's yeah, interesting. You know, I, I wonder who he's playing for these days. What? Hang on a minute. What? Kenny Prince Schwab is a free agent. How did I not spot this? I can't quite believe it. I, we were having a great time at Portsmouth. I thought he would kick on and sign for a massive club, really continue his career. He's quality. He's still 84 rated and 23 years of age. I mean, why is he not playing for Barca, for Real Madrid, for, for Bayern or anyone like that? Surely he's... He hasn't been waiting for me this whole time, has he? I know there are some players that just love their managers and want to play for them the whole career, but I've never seen anyone turn down offers from massive clubs for... <laughs> All right, if no one else is going to sign you and you're not going to play for anyone else, then I may as well bring you in. Kenny Prince Schwab, step into my office. This would be a coup like no other. I can't believe we're potentially bringing back a career mode legend here. But of course, it had to come down to wages, which to be fair, we've got the cash for. This man is 23 years of age, 84 overall, and we're paying him 37 grand a week? Or maybe I'm just being self-centered. Maybe he's not coming back to play for me again. Maybe, maybe he just wants to play with that boy Junior. I think by now everyone's seen the glimpses that his father showed and every player on the planet wanted to play with that boy at his peak. You know what, mate? If that's what you want to get paid, I will not barter you down a single cent. Welcome to Forest Green Rovers, Kenny Prince Schwab. But now that we have indeed signed KPS, our first ever 80 rated player at Forest Green Rovers, we've got a couple of 70 odd rated players here or there, but now we've got our first player of real quality. And I'm thinking, lads, we've got this FA Cup game against Brighton. I don't know if they're still a Premier League side or not, but they're still obviously Premier League-ish quality. So I would like to think that uh, they're tough opponents. Despite that, I reckon I want to do something special in the FA Cup this season. I want to go on a little bit of a run with Forest Green Rovers. With that boy Jr. and Kenny Prince Schwab leading us, anything is possible. Please, come on. We want to do well in the FA Cup, please. Oh, it's a 2-2 it's two -two draw. We have to play the replay. But how about this, though? We've already got that boy Jr. and Kenny Prince Schwab linking up both with goals. It's a replay, yes, but we are still alive in the FA Cup. And for the last game in January, this FA Cup replay, please. We want, we, please, we want, we want to do well in the FA Cup. Let's do it. It is a 1-1 draw, but 5-4 on penalties, come on! We are hopefully doing something, I don't know what, but something in this FA Cup. Time's going to tell whether or not we do anything in the FA Cup, and if, and this is, I guess, the main thing, do we get promoted to the championship. One last checkup on Dat Boy Jr. before we get underway to the end of the season. He's currently on 71 overall, plus 15. He's gone up by... Oh my goodness, there's no way that he is going to finish below 73 or even level with that boy when he hit 73 at the end of his second season. That boy Jr. is going to surpass his father in this regard. That's unbelievable. But it is now time. The push to the end of the second season with that boy Jr. is underway. <laughs>
So, I said I wanted to do something special in the FA Cup. I just had to pause a little bit. We're not even at the end of the season, but we're doing ridiculously well. We are in the FA Cup quarterfinals, and guess who we drew? Manchester United. We already had Arsenal. I mean, they're a pretty big club, but Manchester United, okay there. And it's not just a game against Manchester United. It's a game against Manchester United at Old Trafford. We have had a couple of games in a row, so a few of the players are tired, including Dat Boy Jr., but I mean, come on, man. It's Manchester United at Old Trafford in the FA Cup. I've got to play him. He needs to play the game. I need to play the game. Let's get straight into it. Who the hell is that bloke? I don't know who he is because he's not got a real face. And off of the fact that he's like really, really short and has blonde hair, I mean, I'm thinking like a like a Lorenzo Insigne, but Insigne's got a real face in the game. I don't know if this bloke's actually going to play, but Mourinho, I don't know what you're cooking up, mate, but whatever. It's the FA Cup. It's the quarterfinals. Manchester United away. Let's do this. Okay, so in the lineups before this game, apparently this bloke's name is Max Power. I've never heard of him before, but apparently he's been killing it for Manchester United this season. Apparently they love him down in Manchester, but it's time to silence these Theatre of Dreams fans. Let's get this win. Right up the middle, I see the pace. Oh, brilliant from Ryan Leonard. I don't think we'll be able to slip him in here. Or maybe we won't have to. Kenny Prince Schwab's offside! He scores, he's off and celebrating, finally he's realised. God, I can see that run. Oh, maybe now still. Surely now, Leonard the shot, oh! Just had a bit of pressure on him from Matic, and it sails over the crossbar. My God, we've had such a good start to this game. Dangerous, oh, dangerous ball. Get in front! Fucking it's, I, oh my God, I made fun of him at the start, but it's Max Power! We were playing so well, and now this little fuck, this fucking, who are you, Max Power? Who the fuck is this guy? Honestly, it pisses me off how I don't even know who this bloke is. He just, bottom corner, powers it past Mika, and Manchester United take a lead. That's probably their first or second attack of the game. We've been fucking great, and yet we're down. Oh, and isn't Mourinho happy about it too, you fucking little... Jesus Christ, who is this guy? I'm... All right, come on. Chances on here. We have options, you know. I really like the look at this, but Rashford, who's gone all the way back. I can surely cut this back. Post! Mendes Lang blocked by my own fucking player! We can't do this against Manchester United! Why is the guy that I know the least about in this Manchester United team the one that's setting them on fire? Fuck no! Come on, boys, we can sort him. Sort him out. Stop him. Cross back post, that's... He's cut it back to Mkhitaryan. He isn't even in Manchester United anymore. He still is in this one. Power gets the assist. Our FA Cup dream is dying. It's being killed by this guy. At first, it looks like he's just going to run out like a fucking moron. But then he cuts back the most amazing ball to Mkhitaryan, who toe pokes it. All we need is one. All we need is one. All we need is... Oh, my God. He's in the post. No. Power. Shifts. Don't tell me he's... Oh, my God. Now he gets a third... Mkhitaryan just, just, it feels like they've got so much pace about us as well. Fuck, this is getting ugly. How does, I, how do I keep turning the ball over in my own fucking half so often? Max Power, stay in front of him, please. Slips in Pogba. Oh, I nearly had a hat-trick of fucking assists against us, Max Power. Nope, in the end, not to be. FA Cup dream, dead at Old Trafford. Our, our dream, convincingly enough, is dead at the theatre. Well, the big talking point today is this fucking bloke. I have no idea who he is. He provided two assists for Mkhitaryan, scored himself. He's fucking ridiculous. I don't know who he is. I need to check him out. Holy shit, people. Every every stat that this guy has is 99 rated. Like, look at it. It's all, all of it. How has this guy slipped under only just my radar? I swear to God. I suppose I can kind of understand the 99 on the back of his shirt now. I... Fuck, I, I guess he's earned it. Well, I mean, our FA Cup dream is over, unfortunately. Out in the quarterfinals to Manchester United. But we are still on for the promotion to the championship. But just leave it with me. We'll hopefully take care of business. I'll continue to train Dat Boy Jr. And we'll see where we are at the end of the season. And 
So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Finally at the end of the League One season. And how did Forest Green Rovers do? Well, the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, that we are promoted up into the championship. We finish in second place. Unfortunately, not first. And unfortunately, only a point behind Preston North End. There's no more football left for Forest Green Rovers, no more football left for Dap Boy, and as we take a look at his stats, we see that even though he didn't end up making the plus 50 appearances that some of the other blokes did because of his low overall at the start, we do see that in 32 games, Dat Boy Jr. racked up 14 goals and 5 assists. Not bad. He finishes with 76 overall. That is, he's a gold card. He went from being rated 1 to a gold card in Ultimate Team in just two seasons. He also, ladies and gentlemen, finishes three overall ahead of Dat Boy at the end of the second season. So, the race for who's going to become 99 rated first, at the moment, Dat Boy Jr. is in front. He may reach a 99 overall before his father did. Can you believe it? And we have made it to the final day. It's about time we end this second season with Dat Boy Jr. To start this third season, Dat Boy Jr. is currently at a 76 overall, which is higher than his father was at at this point. It took Dat Boy a little over three and a half seasons to get to a 99 rating, and Dat Boy Jr. looks on track to maybe beat his father. He has to grow by plus 12 in his overall to match his father at the end of Season 3, and anything past that is just him going even further. Of course, this isn't all just about Dat Boy Jr. There's so much else happening as well. The team he's playing for, Forest Green Rovers, the team that gave this one overall player a chance, has rewarded them beautifully by promoting them all the way up to the championship. And we're building a pretty good side that hopefully will be featuring in the Premier League next season. We brought in some pretty high-rated players through pre-contracts, and we've also brought back one other career mode icon. Kenny Prince Schwab, the Portsmouth career mode icon, returned to team up with Dat Boy Jr. An 85 rated superstar was willing to drop down to Forest Green Rovers just to compete and play with the son of the late great Dat Boy. And I'm sure he won't be the only one. There's many other players and many other icons that will be joining Dat Boy Jr., I am sure. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, we've got some pretty reasonable depth for a championship side. We've still got Queerly Fang kicking around as well. The ex-Bayern Munich legend. I wanted to play him a lot more often, but unfortunately his overall growth maybe hasn't been as rapid as, say, Dat Boy Jr.'s has. Speaking of overall growth, it is time for the first batch of training drills, of course. At this point, it's really not the drills that are helping his overall soar. It's just natural growth that hopefully will get him there. And that's what makes it interesting. Hopefully we'll really see his physical stats go up as well, because as brilliant as some of his technical stats are, look at that pace. It's absolutely just... Ow. Oh. He's got 25 strength for a bloke that's 7 foot tall and built like a bloody tank. To be fair, he does only weigh like 178 pounds. The exact same weight as his father, actually, except the only difference was... um. Dat Boy was 5 foot tall and Dat Boy Jr. is 7 feet tall. His father was horrifically overweight, yet he's borderline malnourished. Someone please give this man a donut. I'm really hoping to see the physical side of his stats really start to grow and hopefully he may even crack into the 90s by the end of this season. Again, going further than his father did. I'll tell you what I have been doing as well. I've also been doing some youth scouting just to try to build up the youth academy, try to hopefully find some superstar players through the youth system as well. We've also come across this lad as well. My scouts have found Antonio Costa, six foot four goalkeeper from Italy. Something about Italian goalkeepers, you know, they always produce. He's got a ripping potential. His overalls may be a bit of a way off at the moment, but I'm sure he'll develop and maybe we might be seeing this lad in the starting 11 in the future as well. We are getting very close to the first game of the season and even though the training is being very arduous, very slow, look at the overall, 78 already. He's already grown by plus two in his overall in just one month and it happened randomly. He just randomly shot up to a 78. If he grows by plus two every single month for the rest of this season, he probably won't get to a 99, but He's surely going to be in the 90s. Are we going to see Dat Boy Jr. surpass the likes of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo and become the highest rated player? But we have reached game one of the championship season. We're going up against Bristol City and it's Dat Boy Jr.'s first competitive game of the season. We want three straight promotions. We want to go straight up to the Premier League. We need to get off on the right foot. Dat Boy Jr., time to show him what you're made of. Here we go then. First game of the season's about to get underway. Our push for the Premier League starts right here. Queeley Fang is ready. Kenny Prince Schwab is ready. Dat Boy Jr. Is... Oh, 
No way! Are you seeing this? Superboy Jr. is back already! It's only the first game of the season! I am shocked! I have no idea what has brought this on. You know what? Let's just let's just embrace him while he's here. Fasten your seatbelts, people. This is gonna be fantastic. Okay, so uh, Dat Boy Jr. is back, and at halftime, the score is 10 0. No surprises for guessing, but all goals were scored by Dat Boy Jr. or Superboy Jr. I mean, I don't who do you give it to? I, I have no idea what's going on. It's a Superboy transformation out of thin air. I guess all I've got to do is see out the second half then, but <laughs> the game's over. And see Dat Boy Jr. making a move here. I'm going to cross it in. It's not going to find him, but it's going to find Leonard instead. 11 0. Well, if anything, we're starting off with three points, but we're also starting off with a hell of an advantage on the goal difference. Kenny Prince Schwab, oh, we're not going to be able to get that boy Jr. a goal in the game. I know that he technically scored 10, or at least he's going to be credited with 10. Look, he's walking away with the match ball. He took 22 shots in the game. It's that boy Jr. that walks away with the match ball, but really, it's all Superboy Jr.'s work, let's be honest. A little disappointing and maybe a tad alarming that I couldn't actually score a goal with regular old that boy Jr., but... Superboy Jr. can bang in 10 and a half, no problem. Well, straight out of that game, continuing on with training, and I just need to sort of digest what happened in that game. There has only ever been, before today, two recorded Superboy transformations. Dat Boy in the Champions League final, and Dat Boy Jr. in the promotion playoff final. Both of those times, they were under extreme circumstances where they had to pull out something special, and that was what brought on the transformation. But this is just... The first game of the season. At first I thought it was being 99 rated that would allow a Superboy transformation like we saw in the Champions League final with that boy. But then that boy Jr. in the playoff final evolved when he was like in his 40s. He was a super low overall. I remember he was just playing like garbage and I didn't even want to believe that he was that boy's real son. But then he pulled out the transformation and it was all but assured. I'm trying to connect the dots. I'm trying to figure out what the, what the similarities are. But this is just a random transformation at the beginning of the season. No extreme circumstances, no nothing. He's just transformed at the beginning of the season. I mean, if anything, he's certainly shot himself way up to the top of the bloody golden boot race, that's for sure, with 10 after one game. I don't know what brought it on. I don't know if he decided to randomly pull out a transformation at the beginning of the season. I just, there are too many questions. Let's just play through the rest of the season. Let's continue this and we'll try to figure it out as we go along. That's weird. I'm trying to give him drills, but it's not letting me. He's not on international duty or anything, so what's going on? Oh no, this is a disaster! That boy Jr. has suffered a broken toe and is out for six weeks. I guess there's nothing really we can do except just advance forward for when he's healthy again. We'll see if his overall goes up, but I'm not sure. And look, while this is obviously awful that we can't train that boy Jr. now, I'm going to take this as an opportunity. Quinley Fang's taken a little bit too long to catch up to the rest of the team, so I'm going to give him some drills. And Antonio Costa, our 60-rated goalkeeper, our Italian goalkeeper that we found in the Youth Academy, he could be one of our own, so let's, why not? Let's give him a call up. I am training players that aren't that boy Jr. This just feels weird. It feels a bit wrong, to be honest, but uh, look at bloody Costa pulling out the 2A-rated Training drills, unbelievable work ethic. What's going on with you, Queerly Fang? Advanced defending, the one the one training drill that is actually important to you. And take a look at this. The six weeks have gone by. Dat Boy Jr. is back and he can begin training once again and playing games, but I've noticed something. Dat Boy Jr., despite being injured, despite not playing any games, despite not doing any training at all, has still gone up to an 80 rating. He's still continuing to grow even when injured. He can sit at home on the couch for a month and a half do absolutely nothing, and somehow find a way to become an even better footballer. It is up to him to be his father to that 99 rating. We are now currently at the beginning of December, so about a good couple of months into the season, and we have seen Dat Boy Jr. go up from an 80 to an 81. He's really only going up by one overall per month, and let me tell you, n almost none of that is down to training. It's just natural growth. He just basically goes up and overall every single month. But I tell you what, the one thing that's got me very excited is this. Have a look at the sprint speed and the acceleration that's really going up, especially the sprint speed up by 10. We're only about 
I'd say a little over a third of the way into the season, yet that sprint speed seems to be soaring. Could this hopefully be, finally, the season in which we see Dat Boy Jr.'s physical stats actually soar, and maybe his pace can finally go up above, oh, I don't know, something like 40. And just checking in with our Premier League promotion campaign, we are currently sitting in fifth, only just in the top six. So as much as I would have loved to have finished in the top two, it's starting to look like maybe it won't be that straightforward or simple. And hell, it looks like we're just battling to get in the top six. Another month passed, another single overall change for Dat Boy Jr. up to an 82. It looked like he was going to fly at the beginning of this season, but unfortunately, his overall has kind of stagnated a little bit. And maybe that's a bit unfair. He's growing by one overall every single month. It's basically just a given. Uh, Stat-wise, I mean, he's... He's doing okay, but let's not forget that 10 of those goals as well came when he transformed into Superboy Jr. If the only way that he can really stand out and be a star in the championship is for him to evolve into 100 rated Superboy Jr., then that is not a good sign. Of course, being in January, I have been making some additions into the team like some superstar players. Samu Castillo, I'm really looking forward to bringing him in, hopefully for a Premier League season. We've got Enzo Fernandez, who's another player should hopefully bolster up the midfield quite a fair bit. And then Yaya Banana. He's got a lot of potential with this kid. Can you imagine a Yaya Banana, Queely Fang centre back partnership when they're at their prime? We would never concede a goal ever again. But those players are coming in, hopefully, some other pre contract signings as well to join us next season, hopefully in the Premier League. And I am also working behind the scenes to make some other signings that we'll just keep under wraps for now. I'm going to advance ahead toward the end of the season, not maybe all the way, but. Have a look at where we are on the table. We're currently still in that top six, and it doesn't look like we're maybe in with a slight chance of going automatically up in the top two, but it looks like hopefully we should secure a top six spot at least and have to do it through the playoffs. We just signed a bunch of 80-rated players on pre-contracts. I don't imagine they'd be too happy if they were playing in the championship. And again, look at these names. Kenny Prince Schwab, 87 rated. Dat Boy Jr., 82 rated. Queenly Fang for crying out loud. Yes, he may only be 62 rated, but he used to play for Bayern. He's got standards to keep. Yeah, the reason he came here was to play with Dat Boy Jr. in the first place. Doesn't mean he's going to stick around if we ain't getting to the Premier League. The time is right now. We've made the pre-contract signings. I've brought some players in in this window as well. We're all set and ready to push on. We will continue to train Dat Boy Jr., but it is time to advance to the end of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. This far up the pitch now. And it's a shot now! Wonderful goal! Well, then, cup ties. Winning is all that matters, and they have won. Before the finals of the Emirates FA Cup. This attack, slipped through, in on the goalkeeper, threading it through, needs to stay cool now, must score! What a big goal that might turn out to be. Well that's the quarter-final over with, they're through, and they're through into the semi-finals, great feeling for them. Join us as we bring you all the action from Wembley. Emirates FA Cup semi-final is underway. Chits! Couldn't quite keep it down. It's a great chance. They have taken the lead here in the dying moment. Well, this place is absolutely jumping. They are the winners. So people, here we are at the end of the season and what a ridiculous second half of the season it was. Dat Boy transformed again into Superboy Junior. We have never seen ever two Superboy transformations in one season. Except the thing is, he transformed not twice, not three times, but four times in one season. One in some random championship game in the middle of the season against Norwich, and then again in just another random championship game away at Ipswich. 
At any random point with no prior warning, that boy Junior just seems to evolve into this higher being, this power, whatever it is. I almost wonder if he's even in control of it. Basically what I'm saying is surely he can't sustain being Superboy Junior. He can't sustain being a 100 rated player. Otherwise, surely he'd just be 100 rated all the time. I just have so many, I just have so many questions and so little answers. What is this power? But regardless, obviously this means beating Tottenham in the semi-finals, we have made the FA Cup final. Little old Forest Green Rovers has made it to the FA Cup final, but our opponents are Manchester United. We face off with him again. Max Power. Just as I have so many questions about Superboy, I have so many questions about Max Power. Like, where did he come from? How was he 99 rated? How have I never heard of him? I don't know his origin. I don't know where he came from. Last season, I was just continuing to train Dat Boy Jr. I was continuing to develop him. We got matched up in the FA Cup against Manchester United earlier on, and that's when we found him. That's when we discovered Max Power, and apparently the fact that he was a 99 rated player for them, just doing phenomenal. I didn't know if he was a youth academy player that was promoted, or a glitch player, or anything. But there's no record of a Max Power anywhere. Max Power and Manchester United stand in the way of Dat Boy Jr.'s first ever title. And you have got to be insane if you think we're going to let him do it. I don't care if he's 99 rated. Look at him. He is a midget in comparison to Dat Boy Jr. He is going to get bodied. Except Max Power's strength is like 99 and Dat Boy Jr.'s is like 50. But who bloody cares? Look at the size difference between these two. This is like if Demetrius Jackson fought Anthony Joshua. We are taking home this first title. Come on, boys, and come on, boy, Junior. It is the big day in the Emirates FA Cup season. It is the final, of course. Two terrific teams about to go head to head. We are underway. Come on, Dat Boy Jr. Come on, Kenny Prince Schwab. Come on, Queely Fang. Come on, Antonio Costa. Remember the Youth Academy goalkeeper that we signed as well. I've chucked him into this game just because Mika, my actual goalkeeper, has been a little bit too disappointing recently. Oh, no. Horrible turnover. What a save from Costa. Oh, my goodness. How are we not 1-0 down right now? I knew it. I knew I should have been playing him earlier. This is unbelievable. He's got no hair. I don't care. What a save. If we go on to win this, that is it. That is the most iconic save. I can't believe I nearly completely threw away the FA Cup final in the first 10 minutes of the game. I can't believe It was a good save. Come on, boys. After, after a save like that, they've got to be demoralized. We have got to pounce. All right, we've given away a free kick here right on the edge of the box, and this is, uh, this is not good. Something I forgot to tell you guys is that uh, I did a bit of digging on Max Power, and it turns out that not only is he 99 rated, but his free kick accuracy is... He's never missed a free kick. You better not do it, you bastard. You better not! Just one. Would you one day miss one? Max Power has never missed a free kick in his life. Not once could you ever. Just let it go. Oh. Come on, man. How is that even possible? How can you score from a free kick every single time? Oh my God, it's true. It's true. I genuinely didn't believe it. I thought it was just like a glitch or something. No, he scores every single free kick. Okay, sure. He's got 99 free kick accuracy, 99 shot power, 99 curve, but like it's still 99. It's not 100. It's not 100%. You've got to miss one. I just cannot fathom it. He is so good at free kicks, Max Power, that he basically turns any foul outside of the box into effectively about as good a chance to score as a penalty. It's just bullshit. How does one player honestly get that good? Where the hell did you come from, Max Powell? Well, the first half is over and we really didn't do anything in it except for witness an amazing, brilliant save by Costa only for him to concede a free kick to Max Power, which again, we have learned, do not fucking touch Manchester United players. 
any free kick outside the box is effectively a goal. That is definitely going to make things pretty goddamn hard for me. I'm just going to be totally honest with you. That boy Junior is on the wrong side here, but I'm going to cross it in anyway and hope for the best. Kenny Prince Schwab wins the header. A bit of roll reversal. Well, you normally want Kenny Prince Schwab, the winger, crossing it into the seven foot tall striker. Why not swap things up a bit? That boy Junior showing that he doesn't just have the finishing ability. He can whip in a ball as well. What about that for a header from KPS? Perfect placement. Absolutely pinpoint coming in off the post. Nothing David De Gea could do about it. We needed someone to step up. And really, it's that boy Junior with a fantastic cross. But Kenny Prince Schwab that sticks it in the back of the net. On your KPS, it's 1-1. Let's go. Oh, Martial, he won the header, but Costa's there with another flying leap. He is an insane goalkeeper. You can see the ball in here. Why not go for it? Depp Boy Jr. went for something spectacular. Maybe not to be. Would have been nice, though. Would have been good, but he just couldn't keep it down. And I think that might be full time, which means this FA Cup final has to go to extra time. We just have not really been able to do much in this game. We got... One chance, one great cross from Dapboy Jr., one pinpoint header from Kenny Prince Schwab, but that's really been it for us. We just haven't been able to break the game open, honestly. It's been too tough. United's on the attack here. Martial, stay in front, please, boy. What? No way! No fucking way! No! You're having a laugh! We gotta see this on the replay. I don't know. I feel like he got the ball, but he maybe took him out. I don't believe this. I don't, I don't fucking believe this. Max Power's going to step up. What way does he go? I'm saying left. Ah, fuck's sake. Oh, I can't believe it. I fucking hate this little prick. I, I genuinely, Max Power, please die in a fire. Honestly, I've guessed the wrong way. He probably like read my mind or some shit. He's got like 99 mental. He's got telekinesis or some point at this fucking point. I'm so mad. What a finish. What a fucking penalty. I hate him. I I, I genuinely hate him with every fiber of my being. Max Power, you, you just know. We are we are just screwed. We are screwed in this game. We are screwed going up against Max Power. And if we were to come back from this, it would be marvelous. I didn't want to do it, but I feel like we've got no choice. I may have forgotten to mention it, but we did make a signing. Bloody marvellous signing, marvellous fucking the camper is united with the son of Dat Boy. I didn't want to let him loose until the Premier League, but we need him now more than ever. Dat Boy Jr. and marvellous Nakamba share the pitch for the first time. It is half time and extra time, and we need something in these next 15 minutes or our FA Cup dreams are over. We'll work it out to the left. Great pass from Nakamba. Kenny Prince Schwab is running. The defence really isn't here. We can cross it back here. It'll be Mendes Lang's blown over. I can't believe it! Why did I trust in anyone except for bloody Kenny Prince Schwab, that boy, maybe Queenly Fang, and of course Marvelous Nakamba. Everyone's at the back. Look at the space though that we've got here. Look at Queenly Fang go through up the middle. Queenly Fang, can he shoot? Queenly Fang! It's not enough! I don't believe it! It's the season! One Marvelous Nakamba! The Queenly Fang done it! I don't believe this! We're on the ladder attack! Scott Borden scored! This is extraordinary! He baits out that one defender, creates the space for Queenly Fang. We're on all out attack. I thought it would be Dat Boy Jr. It's surely gone through a pair of legs and only just avoided De Gea. And now it is a foul by Max Power on the edge of the box. And we have a chance in the 120th minute to win it from a free kick. Dat Boy Jr., please, this is your moment. Queenly Fang has scored, assisted by Nakamba. You've assisted Kenny Prince Schwab. This is your moment. Your counterpart, your rival, Max Power, he hit the back of the net. It's your time. That boy Junior steps up. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. No way could it be. It is. It's Super Boy Junior. Oh, look who decided to show up for the last kick of the game to win us the FA Cup. Super Boy Junior. To win us the FA Cup! He's missed. What the hell happened? Superboy Jr. appears, 
just to take a free kick at the end of the game. You think surely he's going to do it. You think surely this is the moment. We're going to win the FA Cup final in the 120th minute with Superboy Jr. taking the free kick. But as he's going to take it, he turns back into that boy junior. I'll tell you what I think's happened. I think he's buggered. I think he's pulled out Superboy Junior at the most random points in the season, and now, at the very end of it, when we need him the most, he's got no energy for it. He couldn't hold his Superboy form for the one second we needed him to. He went back to Dat Boy Junior and fluffed his free kick. And here we are at penalties. What is this FA Cup final? So the FA Cup comes down to this. Pogba takes the first. Oh my god, he's thinked this. He's Penenkin on the first penalty. Pogba, please. I know you're a World Cup winner, but you don't do that. Up steps now. Dat. Boy. I don't believe it. My God, no, he's missed. Martial. You don't do it. Oh, what a save. What a save. He's amazing. Antonio Costa. And now we resume again. Kenny Prince Schwab, we need you to deliver here, son, please. Yes, he's done it. Come on. It's tied up again at 1-1. Here we go. Matic steps up. Does Costa have another amazing, brilliant, world-class save? Enemy. Oh, my God. It gets underneath him. Time now for Marvellous Nakamba. And he's put that in the roof of the net. No chance for even De Gea. Now comes Mkhitaryan. I thought for some reason he'd go down the middle. Mendes. Lang is going to step up for this one, and off the woodwork. No, 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 no. Who's stepping up to take it? Who's stepping up to t It's Max Power. Anyone but him. Please. No. Please. I cannot believe it. After all we did to get to this point, the entire season, the whole tournament, we make it to the final, we force penalties, and we blow it. Manchester United win the FA Cup final. Max Power scores the winning penalty. Max Power lifts up the FA Cup trophy. It was always going to be, he was always going to have the final say, wasn't he? They're like, no one else. No one else in that Manchester United team. It had to be him. Even a marvellous Nakamba substitution, which did change the game a little bit, to be fair. It definitely got pretty hectic toward the end of things, but it just, it still wasn't enough. And I'll tell you what too, Manchester United has become the nemesis of the Dap Boys now. Dap Boys Senior, of course, nearly lost a Champions League final against Manchester United, and now Dap Boy Junior loses an FA Cup final against Manchester United, and Max Power, who plays for them, basically becoming his rival. Well, as flat and as broken and as just devastated as I am after that result, I can at least hang my hat on this. We did get promoted. We will be in the Premier League next season, which means we're getting at least two shots at Manchester United and two shots at max power. Let's just let's just wrap up this season. Let's get it out of the way because I, I, I'm not in the mood. Not after losing the FA Cup final like that. But that boy Junior got 35 goals for the season. That isn't too bad. From 51 appearances, really started to pick it up toward the end. Of course, his overall, however, didn't end up being exactly what I thought it would be at the end of this season. He's at an 87, which means he is now behind his father, who was 88 overall at the end of the third season when we were doing it with him. Dat Boy Jr., who was ahead of his father all this time, has now slipped behind Dat Boy Sr. in the race to 99 overall. And despite the lower overall than we first initiated, despite the loss of growth, we have not slowed down in one specific area. The physical attributes, specifically the pace. Have a look at this. He's gone up by plus 30 in his pace in one season. So basically, he's... Doubled his pace in one season, essentially. My mood is not sensational right now. The vibe is a bit dead, but seeing a 30-plus increase to the pace makes me very happy. But season three is over. Bring on season four, and bring on the Premier League. Now, we have some very, very sad news. Boy has passed away. It's an absolute tragedy for everyone in football. It's a very short statement on the FA website saying they extend their condolences and sympathies to his, fa to his family. When we last saw Dat Boy Jr. in action, this is what happened. <laughs> 
Forest Green Rovers were promoted to the Premier League. Forest Green Rovers were also beaten in the FA Cup final by Manchester United and Dat Boy Jr's arch nemesis and rival Max Power. Dat Boy Jr had the chance to win the FA Cup final but couldn't hold his Superboy form long enough to take what would be the winning free kick. Dat Boy Jr also transformed into Superboy Jr and unprecedented five times in one season. We had only ever seen it happen twice before. Dat Boy in the Champions League final and of course Dat Boy Jr in the League 2 playoff final. Never before five times in one season and never in such relatively meaningless games as well. I suspect that to be the reason why he couldn't hold his form long enough to take the free kick to win the FA Cup final. And hang on, it looks like we've just got a message from Dat Boy Jr. Dat Boy Jr. says, I want to apologize. I was too exasperated from the previous transformations. I couldn't hold my Superboy form long enough to win the FA Cup. I wouldn't have transformed all those times if I could have. Hang on a sec, what? Sometimes it feels like something inside me just brings it out of me against my will. Uh, okay, th this is going to a place I didn't expect it to. I'll be better this season, boss, I promise. Looking forward to it. Brings it out of him against his will. What? What? I don't know what he could possibly mean by that. There are still so many questions around Dat Boy, Dat Boy Jr., where they came from, how they possess this super boy power. When Dat Boy Jr. did five transformations in a row, I knew something was up. But bringing it out of him against his will. I guarantee you I, I wasn't expecting an explanation like that, but... We have to move on, because we've got a brand new season of football to focus on. As I did mention before, we have made it to the Premier League. Forest Green Rovers from League 2 all the way up to the top, and it's been led by Dat Boy Jr. So what if we haven't won a title? It would have been nice if we'd picked the FA Cup up, but Max Power is just a flog. We, uh, we made the mistake of giving up a free kick right on the edge of the box as well. So you know, with Max Power, the man that never misses free kicks was going to score. And in case you've forgotten, when I say Max Power never misses free kicks, I'm not saying that sarcastically. He never misses free kicks. If you see him standing over a dead ball, it is over. He's the only 99 rated player in the game at the moment, but don't you worry, Dat Boy Jr. is coming for him. Dat Boy Jr., 87 rated going in to this season. He started at one overall. He's now at an 87. It's super impressive, but at the same time, he's a little bit behind the late great Dat Boy, of course, when he was at this point in the season. Rest in peace to him. We miss him every day, but Dat Boy Jr. looking to continue his legacy, and I've now given him these drills. Dribble possession, lofted through passing, advanced free kicks, and I've even given him some defending drills, because at this point, almost every stat that he has, the majority of which are 99 rated, we've got to start working on some other stuff. I haven't really been working on his penalties that much either. He's only got 40 for penalties, so we'll be doing those as well. And there's not an awful lot of progression to be had with training anymore. It's all natural growth from here, especially when he's getting wank results like this. Even at an 87 rating, I'm sure Dat Boy Jr. is going to tear the Premier League apart. But let's take a look and see who his supporting cast is for this season. This team, while strong in some areas, is maybe a little weaker in others. But there is absolutely no weakness to be had in the front three. Dat Boy Jr. leading the line with the captain's armband on his bicep. To his left is the one and only Kenny Prince Schwab, KPS, the career mode legend. The Germans on the left wing and the Spaniard on the right wing recently brought in on a preseason contract. It is Castillo. We've got plenty of pace down the wing to whip crosses into the 7-foot, soon-to-be, 99-rated striker. Dat Boy Jr. may not reach 99 quicker than Dat Boy did, but he is going to get there. The midfield maybe could do with a couple of new players in it, but there's one player that's a lock for this starting 11. It is marvellous fucking Nakamba back in the Premier League and ready to do bits. The Zimbabwean is linking back up with the son of Dat Boy. On top of bringing Castillo in on a free, we also brought in a centre-back, Yaya Banana, and to his right-hand side, Kui Li Fang, the Chinese superstar centre-back, buying reject, but they don't know what they're doing. We've also had a youth academy prospect come through up the ranks. Antonio Costa, of course, made one or two unbelievable saves in the FA Cup final. So impressive and has such a high potential, I genuinely think I might give him a fair few starts this season as well. And look, the team's pretty strong in a fair few areas. It could do with some work elsewhere, but for now, I'm happy to roll with this and see where it gets us in the Premier League. But the time has come, ladies and gentlemen, for Dat Boy Jr., 
and Forest Green Rovers to begin their first ever Premier League season. I'll continue to train up Dapboy Jr. We'll continue to track his progress and hopefully we will see him not just hit 99, but lead Forest Green Rovers to some success and to compete in this, the Premier League. Oh, and by the way, because I know you're all going to ask the question, the first game between Forest Green Rovers and Manchester United, Dat Boy Jr. and Max Power, September the 20th. We won't have to wait long at all. It is a brand new season. It is underway. Let's do this. Welcome to you all to Premier League football again. The opening game coming right up. Okay then, we've reached the halfway stage of the Premier League season and that boy Junior at the moment is currently sitting on 93 overall. That is an increase of plus 6 to his overall at the beginning of the season, so considering the fact that we're at the halfway stage, there's a very real possibility, maybe, just maybe, he could hit a 99 before the end of this season. Look at those technical stats, man. He's got so many in the 99s, he's growing by a bunch and he is so close to fulfilling his legacy. And you thought the technical stats were good, look at his physical stats. Oh my God, his sprint speed is up into the 90s. Even his strength, my God, the strength of a seven footer. He's now 88 strength with that sort of pace. He is going to be unstoppable. I tell you when he hits that 99, the whole competition, the whole game is in trouble. Unfortunately though, things haven't maybe exactly gone to plan for the actual team, Forest Green Rovers. Forest Green Rovers currently sitting 15th in the table, not exactly looking like they're gonna be any dangers from European football or even maybe getting into the top 10. Maybe if they can rally around, who knows? Manchester United look like they could be on their way to a title depending on if Spurs eventually slip up, which let's be honest, we know that they will. And it's becoming pretty clear that even though this team has some star players in it, look, Kenny Prince Schwab, it's up to a 90 overall now, for crying out loud. I, I'm almost starting to think, who's going to hit 99 first? Is it going to be Boy Junior or bloody Kenny Prince Schwab? But I think, I think we could do with a couple more. There were a couple of players specifically I wanted to go for. One, probably wouldn't have played for a championship side though. And two, didn't really have the cash for. But now that we're a Premier League club, I think it's time to bring them back. Alex Oxalade Chamberlain, we're bringing him back. He was one of the original boys, and he is going to be playing with Dat Boy Jr. He was one of the original supporting cast for Dat Boy alongside Marvelous Nakamba, and Oxalade Chamberlain now is linking up with the son of Dat Boy. And you know what? He's not going to be the only one. We've got Lucas Boy as well, Boy 2, ready for backup. We'll have him, but we'll only have him next season because he's only available on a pre-contract, but that's fine. He will be ready and waiting next season to back up Dat Boy Jr., the same he did with Dat Boy. And as for Oxlade Chamberlain, I'm just going to buy this man outright, where hopefully he'll be able to make a difference and push us a little higher up the table. We are well and truly bringing all the boys back together. But it looks like we're going to sign on the dotted line then. Alex Oxley chamberlain is joining Forest Green Rovers. My God, Kenny Prince Schwab, Boy Jr., Oxley chamberlain Marvellous Nakamba, Yaya Banana, Kui Lee Fang, Antonio Costa, who is turning out to become quite a decent Youth Academy prospect. I mean, hell, that Boy Jr.'s already got 17 goals this season from just 20-something appearances. Let's advance to the end of the season. Let's see where we end up. We are going to see in action the top scorer in the league. And we've got a free kick here. Has a go here! He's puffing his cheeks out there, thinking for the moment that that was on its way in the free kick. And they score! And open the scoring here.
Reach out of the goalkeeper's reach. Up in the top corner. Mkhitaryan is behind. They've got to curb this, Alan, haven't they? they? He's only got a yellow this time, but it's wild out there. Right, he's right. Oh, it's a terrific free kick. And the goalkeeper has given absolutely no chance. So we have reached the end of the Premier League season and... Things maybe didn't exactly go the way that I thought they would. First things first, Manchester United won the Premier League. Is there any surprise? Led by Max Power. They bested us both times that we played him. Max Power, of course, scored not just in every game that we played against him, but scored a free kick as well. I'm telling you, he's never missed a free kick. On the other side of the table, though, where we are, we only just managed to survive, staying in 17th place, only just clinging to survival. I did not expect this Forest Green Rovers team with a superstar like that boy Jr. in it to finish in this position. I mean, goddamn, he won the golden boot, scored 25 goals in the Premier League, and he also won the player of the competition as well. But in the end, we just managed to survive. It's been a bitterly disappointing campaign, and it's been very interesting. First off, not one single Superboy transformation this entire season from Dat Boy Jr., despite him transforming like five times in the season prior, and him coming out to us saying that it was happening against his will. As if like he wasn't able to control it or anything. The supporting cast did their bit in a way, I suppose. Kenny Prince Schwab with seven goals and four assists. Not many, not great, but the bulk of the scoring all fell on Dat Boy Jr.'s shoulders anyway. Dat Boy Jr. went up by nine this season in his overall, so probably won't hit that 99 rating this season, but almost definitely next season, and I cannot wait for that. But this whole season, I think I just want to put in the rear view, we've got some good talent coming in next season, so hopefully, with Dat Boy Jr. leading us, we can do so much better than we did this season. I probably should have got on this too a little sooner, but I actually still need to give Dat Boy Jr. a new contract because it's expiring in like two months. So we'll do that along with everyone else that needs to get signed up as well. well hang on. Hang on. Looks like Dat Boy Jr. sent us another email. I'm going to keep this quick. I'm leaving Forest Green Rovers. Where did this come from? I'd hoped it wouldn't come to this, but every day I keep hearing a voice in the back of my head telling me to leave, and I'm finally convinced I can't win anything at this club. I cannot believe this. You've been with us from the start. You've been with us from League 2, Daft Boy Jr. We've risen the ranks together. Ugh. And now you want to quit because of one bad season, which we didn't even go down, thank you. I don't understand. I'm finally convinced I can't win anything at this club. I'm moving on. What is, is utter nonsense. He's been talking trash, just utter nonsense. I can't win anything at this club. He's been talking trash all season. What do you mean you keep hearing a voice in the back of your head? What do you mean you can't control the Superboy power? Like something just brings it out of you. I can't understand his rhetoric. I don't get this logic as if he's not the one making the decisions. That's what he's making it sound like, but right. Okay, well, this is the situation that we're in then. I now have to advance all the way to next season, and it looks like we're going to be doing this without Dat Boy Jr. I can't believe he would bail on us on Forest Green Rovers when he's literally only a couple of overalls away from hitting 99. That is the thing that really gets me. We've been training him up this whole time. We're not even going to get to see him hit 99 overall. Well, I guess the only question is if he's not going to play at Forest Green Rovers next season, where's he going to go? Where could he possibly go? I know he's way too good for no one to just give him a contract, but how how good would it be? How how it would just be justice if no one signed him. That would be awesome. You know what? Honestly, I'm I'm done. I don't want to give Dat Boy Junior any more of my attention. He doesn't deserve it. We're just going to focus on ourselves and this upcoming season. Mm, okay, fine. Has he been signed yet or not? I'm looking for him. I, I'm looking for him. I can't see him in the free agents anywhere. Right, hang on. I'm just looking it up now. So Dat Boy Junior has signed with no. no I don't believe it you have got to be taking the piss that boy junior has gone to Manchester United you're joining Max Power you absolute snake you quitter I don't f I don't believe this everything I thought about him was wrong 
He's a complete fraud. Where is your pride? Where's your respect? You're gonna join your fiercest rival. If you can't beat him, join him, am I right? I'm ashamed to have worked with you for four seasons, developing you as a footballer, for you to stab us all in the back like this. Manchester United just became unbeatable. A strike partnership with that boy Jr. And Max Power, a 99 rated player in Max Power, and a soon to be 99 rated player in Dat Boy Jr., the game is over. How is anyone supposed to beat that? I can't grasp what is happening right now. Why is he doing this? He said it himself, right? A voice in the back of his head. It, that voice in the back of his head is ruining the game. I don't know how I'm going to beat this team, this Manchester United team, with these two players. I, we just have. We just have to push on. That's it. That's all we got to do. There's nothing else that we can do. Okay. A message. You're shitting me. Now we've even got a message from Max Power. All right. What's he got to say? I'm sure he's going to gloat like hell after all the crap I've been talking about him for the last couple of seasons. Sure. Bring it on. Dear Jay. I want to join Forest Green Rovers. What? What is happening right now? Max Power wants to come to Forest Green Rovers. What is going on? For reasons I cannot explain, I must leave Manchester United. Surely Max Power wanting to leave Manchester United right when Dat Boy Jr. joins them. That can't be a coincidence. I have bought out my own contract. How much money does this guy have lying around? See you at training. Sincerely, Max Power. I didn't even get a say in that. Max Power now plays for Forest Green Rovers. Well, we've we've signed him up. He is now officially a part of Forest Green Rovers, and he is going to slide right in where Dat Boy Jr. was. Never in a million years did I expect things to go like this. We lost Dat Boy Jr. right as he was about to hit a 99 overall, and then, out the blue, his rival comes and joins his old team. This. This Premier League season just got a hell of a lot more interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with this blockbuster team that we have assembled, this really nice looking side, there's no way we're going to be fighting relegation this season. Damn it, I reckon we could even contend. That is the plan without Dat Boy Jr., with Max Power at the helm. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this Premier League season. And welcome to you all to Premier League football again. The opening game coming right up. And here it is, we're halfway through the season and we've reached our first meeting between Forest Green Rovers and Manchester United. Dat Boy Jr. versus Max Power, but not as we've known it. I'm taking a look at the lineups. I can't see Dat Boy Jr. there. Are you kidding me? He's flaked! He's flaked on the first meeting! He's too scared to come back to his old stomping ground. He's too scared to face the music. You know what? Fine. Forget him. We'll get him another day. Max Power, boys, time to do your thing. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Lovely ball. Logan has up.
And here we are, almost another full season in the bag, and we have reached the final game of the season. And I've got to stick my hand up and be honest, all right? Max Power, as much as I have slated you in the past, getting you in for Dat Boy Jr. has worked wonders. Forest Green Rovers sit on second place in the Premier League table, just a point behind Manchester United with one game to go. Unfortunately, it's it's not in our hands. We could win, but it comes down to Manchester United. Or at least, that is what I thought. Because little did I know that our final game of the season is against Manchester United away at Old Trafford. Two teams going head to head at the end of the Premier League season to decide who wins the title. Max Power versus Dapboy Jr. if he actually hopefully rocks up this time. You couldn't write a better story and a better finish to the season. Unbelievable. It is simple. Beat Manchester United and win the Premier League. Uh, hold on, I'm just hearing that we're hearing some... Oh my goodness. Both the Associated Press news agency and the Reuters news agency in the last few moments um, have given us some quite stunning breaking news. The news has broken in the past couple of moments. Guys, I don't know, I, I don't know what, what is happening. What, what do you mean? I don't fucking know what is going on. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. I'm seeing in the news, I'm seeing on my Twitter, stuff about conspiracy, about that boy faking his own death. I don't, I don't know what to think. This is some sort of messed up joke. These guys coming out trying to get some bloody relevancy, saying they're part of some bullshit conspiracy. Like, what? why would anyone lie about this? It, they, they can't be. They, they can't be. That boy, that boy, is still alive. My only question is why? Why would that boy do this? Why after winning the Champions League? And why leave that boy junior? And the obvious other question is where in the world did that boy go? I don't know. This is some mad shit to get my head around the day of the bloody Premier League decider. <sighs> Hang on. I've just got another message from... From Max Power. Jay, I think it's time I told you the truth. No. Power was that boy this whole time. This this whole time. He explained everything to me why he did it in that email, but I'm just shocked. That boy, the original 99 rated player, lives on. And I can't believe I didn't realize earlier. He's a 99 rated player, five foot tall, that just popped up after that boy goes missing. Why didn't I think of this earlier? <laughs> oh my, oh my god. That boy, it is. Good to have you back, but hang on a minute. If we're about to play Manchester United, and that boy Junior just left for Manchester United, that means... Here we go then. Manchester United versus Forest Green Rovers. It's very simple. Beat Manchester United, win the Premier League. Well, this is it. The last game of the season. It's in their hands, Manchester United. If they win today, they'll be champions. Here we go. Trying his luck. Quite a save that. The goalkeeper's actually uh, done well here. Believe what has happened to Dapboy Jr. He's turned into a mutt. Get it. Don't let him. No! Who else? 
goes. That boy Junior opens the score. Come on. Oh, that boy. Yeah! Come on! We're tied back up at 1 1, and this Premier League title race is still on. After very little, the little man gets a lot. Okay, all right. That boy Junior gave Manchester United the lead. That boy snatches it right back, tying things back up. Ah, oh, they've got a corner. Ah, oh, they've got a big seven foot bloody bastard in there, too. Stick on him, stick on him, stick on him, stick. Listen, I, I could have taken not winning the title, but not like this. Not to him. Two goals, boys. Come on, we've still got time. Don't give up. Don't quit. That boy, we need you more than ever. Well, if they win the title from here, I don't think it'll ever be topped. Come on, boys. Not long left to go. We need something and we need it now. Oh, free kick. Come on. Time left to win this Premier League. One point is not enough. Oh, you bastard, just take the kick off already. Hang, hang, on. hang, hang on a minute. No. no. Oh my god, we have to face Superboy Junior! God, I'm, just, I'm used to having the Superboys on my team, not on the opposition. I'm um, shit bricks, we're screwed now. Oh my god, we have to score against Superboy Junior! I don't think we can do this! Well, the dream was nice while it lasted. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute! No way could it be! It's not just that boy that's back, it's Superboy as well! It's Superboy for Superboy Junior for the Premier League title! Five minutes left in the season, here we go! One goal to win the title, it's as simple as that!